No, 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 just let me finish. Let me finish. Swear to God, totally true story. So I, I walk back to the boat and I'm going to pour myself like a nice glass of tawny, watch the sun go down. I get on the boat and all my port's gone and I start freaking out. I am like, holy shit, where's all my booze? And then next thing I know, Jeff Bezos walks up and he's like, dude, what are you doing on my boat? And I'm like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, Jeff Bezos and I have the same boat. I'm like, Jeff, I'm so sorry, man. I am parked two slips over. This is so embarrassing. I swear to God, true, true story, true story. <laughs> Oh, didn't see you there. You look, yeah. Um, what can I talk to you about? Oh, you like guns, right? Yeah, you like guns. Have you ever seen one of these? Of course you haven't. This is a SIG P210. It's expensive. There's really nothing else like it in the world. One of my most favorite things, when my manservant wakes me up at like 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning or really any morning because I have a no-show, no-work job at my dad's investment bank, and he's got a nice steaming cup of that civet shit coffee. Wake up, grab my SIG P210, put it in my Corinthian leather gun satchel, head out, say hi to the landscapers, pop in my Range Rover, head over to the range, and just stunt. Absolutely stunt on every single tourist owner out there. Just make them feel like trash. You know, put them in their place. You can really do that with the SIG P210, which is why it's one of my favorite guns and I want to talk to you about it today. My name is James Reeves, you're watching TFB TV and today we're doing a review of the SIG P210. But this gun is actually a little bit out of my price range, if we're being serious. I'm just some dumb hick. I have maybe handled a Swiss P210 a half dozen times, right? I can't really opine intelligently about it. But I was up at SIG HQ this summer, as many of you know, and that's when TFB TV decided to take the opportunity to actually compare the newer American-made SIG P210 to a mint condition Swiss SIG P210 under the supervision of SIG's engineers. Would it be weird if I did a, a blind trigger test here? If I, if I did, let me do it. Okay. So what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about the specs of the new gun. Then you guys are going to see our comparison and our discussion of the history of the gun. And finally, I am going to go change my clothes, finish this video out with my review of the gun and whether or not I think you should buy it. Jeeves, bring me the goddamn spec sheet. We're up here filming the video. God, butlers, am I right? Mm. The SIG P210 has a heritage dating back to 1947, and it was the combat pistol for the Swiss military up until relatively recently. Over that time, it earned itself a reputation for being accurate and reliable. The P210 uses a full reverse rail, similar to the CZ75 series. That is, the slide contains the interior rail, while the frame contains the exterior rail. This feature tends to lead to better accuracy. God, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Fuck yeah. Dead center. Boom. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that though. The P210 standard that we're looking at is a single action only 9mm with an 8 plus 1 round capacity. It features walnut grips, steel three dot sights, and a safety that's been relocated from the original P210 to be more ergonomic. It has an improved beaver tail, once again, aiding the ergonomics, and an incredible three and a half pound target trigger. In a minute, you're gonna see me do a blind test of the SIG P210 Swiss versus the SIG P210 American trigger, and I'm gonna tell you which one I thought was better. The P210 has an overall length of 8.4 inches with a five inch long barrel. It's got a 37 ounce weight, which is a few ounces less than an all steel 1911 full size. It's 1.6 inches wide and 5.3 inches tall, 
with a lengthy 6.7 inch sight radius. The P210 standard and target model both come with a nitron finish and the standard clocks in with a $1,300 street price. For an extra 200 bucks, you can pick up the target model. That's right, for around $1,500. It includes a fiber optic adjustable front sight that is much more fitting on this pistol. It has superior walnut grips that remind me precisely of the famous nil grips of Germany that some of you may be familiar with out there. It also has forward slide serrations, unlike the standard model. Not that I'm sure that really makes a difference, but to me, between the fiber optic adjustable sights, the walnut grips, and the slide serrations, I think it's worth shelling out the extra 200 bucks. As I'm about to tell you, you're probably gonna wanna replace the standard sights anyways. All right, let's head to SIG and do a little comparison. Hey guys, James Reeves with TFB TV. We are at the SIG Sauer Academy with my friend Tim Butler. This is part of the P210 review. No better place to get information about the P210 and a comparison of the Swiss P210 with the new generation American, I'll call it the American P210, than at SIG Sauer. We get it straight from the source. So this is a special treat. Tim, thanks a ton for being on here and doing this for us. Uh, tell everybody who you are and what you do here at SIG. All right, so I'm Tim Baller. Um, my title is General Manager of uh, SIG Custom Works. It's a, it's a new part of SIG that you'll hear more about coming up fairly soon. Um, previous, and, and why we're here to talk about it, was I was the Pistol Product Manager for SIG. Um, my background spans about uh, 29 years now, mostly in um, R&D development for some of the biggest names in the industry as firearms. Um, I'm a trained gunsmith that became an engineer that uh, does this every day. Sure. So safe to say, you know what you're talking about, right? And I you're know. about yeah, and you're about to school us here on TFB TV, and I'm yeah. very much looking forward to it. Why don't you walk us through right now the models of 210 that are available from the American side? What's okay. what's available right now? Okay. So there's basically right now there's two models, and I've got one right here. It's called the standard. So uh, both pistols are five inch guns. Uh, nine millimeter, and uh, I'll get into some specifics. Excuse me, of what makes a 210. But the uh, the 210 standard that's in my hand right here is a fixed sight five inch pistol. Pretty, it's our entry level pistol. Um, and then the next is right next to you, and that's the target. So the target, uh, same size pistol, adjustable sights, target grip, and then you've got a fiber optic front with front cocking serration. So it's it's meant to do a little. A little bit more into the target world. Uh, both very comfortable to shoot. Both ship with three and a half pound triggers, quarter quarter pound either way, mm -hmm. so we can control it that tightly. And then I noticed we've got the 210 carry, which you guys had on display at Shot Show this yep. year. So 210 carries here. Uh, it is still in development. We're not that far off. Um, I would anticipate by the end of 2020 we'll be shipping it, but. Uh, We've got a sample here today. And the difference is there, you've got night sights on it, you've got forward slide serrations. Well, you have forward slide serrations here on the target model yep. as well, yeah. I see. And shorter barrel shorter and the good. aluminum frame, right? right? Yeah. That's that's what I recall. Oh, and of course, like G, are those G10? That is grips? G10 on there, yeah. Tim, tell me what you know about the 210 generally, as if I corner you at a cocktail party, I say, hey, what, what's a 210? All right, so 210 really is a, is a cornerstone of SIG's pistol line. Um, it was adopted by the Swiss military in 1949. Uh, its design uh, can be led back to 1935. It's actually uh, a French designer that started the, the pr program, uh, as far as not for SIG, but uh, the general design. Um, so the 1949 model uh, was in service up till 1975 until it got replaced with what's now known the 220. Uh, so it was in service quite a while. The uh, 210 itself um, came to market around the mid-50s, so the name 210 came into the 50s. About 11 variants, um, very well sought after. Uh, and why is that? Yeah, it's undoubtedly the, the most accurate pistol that, that has been produced. Uh, it even to this day it is. Uh, it is amazingly accurate. Uh, it's a pleasure to shoot a clean trigger. Yeah, absolutely. So why don't we talk about, then you have a, an original yep. Swiss so P210 Swiss. that we're going to compare. Right. So this is one of the original Swi Swiss versions, excuse me. The, um, the, the big changes here, the original, well, the original design has something interesting uh, that only a few models of pistols have today, and that is a reverse rail. 
So that's one of the characteristics. And what a reverse rail is, is the slide rides inside the frame instead of on the outside. Why is that a big difference? Well, it, from a tolerance standpoint, it is a huge difference, meaning that if you have a slide on the outside, it floats, mm -hmm. kind of like a boat. If you have it on the inside, it binds. Mm -hmm. It's a huge difference as far as that. So you have to have your tolerances fairly tight. And that attributes to the accuracy of the pistol. This is an original one. And um, you know, actually, this is a target model, which is, is very, very rare. Um, it was a, it, you know, absolutely sought after and incredible trigger pull. And, and let me interrupt, I'm just because I know everybody's thinking it right yeah. now. If I wanted to buy this, uh, I'm not from SIG, but you know, if I wanted to buy this, what, what am I looking to pay for something like this for the original? Oh boy. I mean, don't even, I, I mean, I, it's several thousand dollars. Five to seven? Yeah. For, yeah. for something like this? Sure, yeah, this absolutely. Yeah. yeah, very well sought after. Um, it, it, and just, a joy to shoot sure. and inspirational as, as a matter of fact. I love it. Um, so up till uh, the Swiss made it up until 2006. Uh, 2010, um, the uh, sister company uh, in Germany started making it sour, started making it, so Sig Sauer itself. Um, in 2010 came up with three models mm -hmm. and, and what they did was they improved it. So you can look between the newer version and the older version, just the beaver tail. Mm -hmm. uh, improved it, made it more shootable. Uh, people that have a high hold on the old version would get railroad tracks. So you'll mm -hmm. slide running over the hand mm -hmm. uh, in, in the in the media area of the palm. So uh, it was improved there. Uh, if you notice on the original, you always see the line with the safety. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the Germans changed that so they put a bearing in there that allowed it to move without scratching the slide. Mm -hmm. They did an internal safety uh, change to it uh, mm -hmm. to bring it up into the, a more modern world for, for, in, for uh, drop safe. We go to 2017, uh, the US version. We took, they had, the Germans advanced it from the original Swiss. We advanced it a little bit more. We did a mm -hmm. couple different things. One is, first thing right off the bat, we adopted the, the super target, the six inch German guns controls. Uh, they were much more ergonomical, aesthetically very, very pleasing. Uh, so we adopted those right off the bat. Um, big changes on the inside. So uh, from a manufacturing standpoint, um, carbon steel gun, a lot of hand fitting. Mm -hmm. This is a stainless steel gun, precision machined. Mm -hmm. So it was a, it was a huge change. Um, the lockup of the pistols, and, and we can show you that close up. Uh, the original lockup looks just like a 1911 multi-lug front. Mm -hmm. um, from a standpoint of manufacturing, you've got to go in with a tool and make those lugs inside. It's very much, from, from a tolerance standpoint, very hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, so we made it just like the rest of the SIGs, they lock up on the port. Mm -hmm. So big change right there. Uh, it allowed us to do something a little more precision. Um, inside there's something it resembles a trigger group. It's called the hammer box. Uh, hand fitted, we made adjustments. Mm -hmm. So you can actually adjust your trigger inside there. So there's a cam adjustment and a few other adjustments that we did. So we, we eliminated um, that hand fitting on that side. Uh, one of the things that we didn't eliminate was um, the, the sear to hammer fit is we lap it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an automated process, but we still lap it. We can't beat it. Um, it was the best, uh, I, at, the, at the SIG Academy here, I spent every, once a week in 2016 for the whole summer shooting one of each gun until I could distinguish exactly what I wanted for a trigger. Mm -hmm. uh, that profile was taken and it sits today in the production line and it electronically is measured against that profile that I came up with. Um, so we wanted that precise, clean trigger. Um, can be adjusted a little bit if you don't like the, the initial uptake. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I actually, after a while, I, I, I enjoyed using it. Um, instead of hand lapping the rails and stuff like that, we chemically machine. Mm -hmm. So that's how we get the, the smooth feel and, um, and keep the tolerancing that we want. Uh, so we've, we've stepped it up to take some money out, uh, significantly less than the original product, um, by machining and, uh, and using 
like chemical machining and other advancements uh, and allowed the gun to be mass produced again. Sure, and I'm sitting here, if I am a P210 loyalist, if I am an, an old school P210 owner, what I'm hearing right now is I'm hearing cost cutting, cost saving, you know, I, I want mine hand fitted, I want Hans over there, you mm -hmm. know, in Germany or Switzerland, putting this thing together by hand and what you guys are doing is you're, you're attenuating the product. How, how would you respond to that? Well, I think we're updating the product. It's, it's, you know, if you think about it, if you're hand fitting, it's because you're making something wrong. We're cutting that and saying, we're not going to make it wrong, we're going to make it right. Um, it, you know, and it's, it, it hopefully allows a lot more people to enjoy the product sure. instead of taking what would be hand fitting, say in 1975 versus 2020, the considerable amount of cost. Mm -hmm. So, and, and labor is where, where the cost of any consumer product is. Sure. Tim, in your heart of hearts, do you believe that the, uh, the original and the new U.S. production, that they're on par in terms of quality, fit, finish, everything, or is one better than the other, in your opinion? Um, it, it's, uh, there is a, is a, obviously a place in my heart for anything original. Sure. And, I'm putting you in a uh, tough spot. I know. Well, I no, it, it, they did an outstanding job. And, um, f but in, in the same light, I am extremely proud of what, what Sig Sauer did here in the, in the U.S. It is, um, you know, arguably the, the, the best production pistol made today as far as accuracy and feel and stuff like that. In general, I'm very proud for what we do and, and for, for a reasonable price. So uh, I'll be 100% honest, I match triggers, I can't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. And I'll sit, we can sit here and try them. Would it be weird if I did a, a blind trigger test here? If I, if I did, let me do it. I'm going to be pointed in a safe direction here, Tim. What I would like you to do so I would like you to hand me either the, uh, uh, let's go with the standard. I'm going to hand you three so you don't know which one. Okay. All right. And I want you to just put the dust cover right here. Um, okay. Right. That's perfect. Because now I can't tell like really what, um, yeah, there. See, I have no idea. I haven't touched any identifying aspect of this gun. Oh, that's a nice trigger. That's really nice. I'm not doing the, the cheat like half eye closed thing where it looks like your eyes are closed, but they're really not. Let's see here. Oh man, that trigger must be. Unsafe. <laughs> there we go. That one's terrible. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not sure. I think you just handed me the same gun. Are you sure? No. All right. That last one. Now, I feel like the last one was different. I'm, I can't say which one was better, okay. but which one, what, what order did you hand those to me in? You, I, I can't tell, I, I don't think I can tell the difference. I, I, I mean, Swiss I truly- was the second one. Oh, it was, I-, I, I The one with the safety. In on. fact, I was listening because I feel like I know what a modern SIG, that tink, like that, I, I know what a modern SIG hammer dropping sounds like. And I was like, I had the second one. I was like, you're gonna save the save the best for last, you know, mm -hmm. save the Swiss for last. I can't tell the difference. Yeah, well, that's very cool, and that's exactly the information that I, I wanted to get. And I'm honored that you would be on the program, and that somebody of your stature would be on our humble YouTube show to to talk about the differences with these guns. We're going back to my conclusion for my review. So let's talk about my review of the gun. What I personally thought about the Sig P210. I think I want to lead in with the only objectively bad thing about this gun. This is the standard model, not the target model, and this is also a very, very early copy. I've actually had this one for quite a long time. The one thing that I could identify that was objectively, objectively wrong with this gun, it isn't necessarily a deal breaker, but the sights that came with the standard model that I reviewed were just goddamn atrocious. These are like three dot combat sights. To kind of put it into an analogy, think about like if you bought a Lamborghini and there was a governor in it that limited you to 55 miles per hour. It's like, sure, you could change that out, but it's like, who in the hell thought this was a good idea? So in any event, these three dot sights that it came with, lackluster, and it's really sad because for a gun that 
you feel like you could probably make precision hits. You could probably hit a silhouette target at 100 yards, and I think we may have even done that with this gun a couple of times. But you've got these monster sights. You want something like maybe a little bit thinner blade on the front, something like uh, maybe a blacked out rear and like a narrow red fiber optic front sight. That would just be mwah. So getting that out of the way, was this gun reliable? Absolutely. We had no issues with it. As usual, I didn't clean it or lubricate it. It came right out of the box and it ran. I don't know how many rounds we have through it. It's definitely fewer than 1,000, but definitely more than 500. Had no issues at all whatsoever. Guys, fit and finish on this gun is fantastic. I feel like if you pick this pistol up, you're not gonna mistake it for an older gun. It doesn't have like a deep bluing or like a glossy finish. So if you're really looking for like a classic finish, you're not gonna get it with the P210, but I can tell you that this finish hasn't rusted. As I said earlier, I believe I've had this gun for about a year now. I haven't done a single thing to it in terms of maintenance other than shoot it, and it still looks like brand new like when it first came out of the box. Racking the action on this gun, it feels like it's riding on glass rails. Again, I haven't lubricated this gun since I got it, and it's still more slippery than O.J. Simpson. But it's really what you would expect, right? This is an expensive gun, you're paying a premium for it, and it's one of those things where I feel like if you had never seen this gun before, never heard of it, and you picked up a new SIG P210, and you racked the action, you'd be like, Oh, that's expensive. You guys know what I'm talking about? Like that feeling, you're like, oh God, this is gonna be an expensive gun. Controls are for righties, it's not ambi, so if you're one of the 10% of the population whose mother was a witch and you're born left-handed, this may not agree with you, but if you're a righty, the controls are great. They're understated, but very functional. This is a good alternative for people who want a 1911, but don't want a 1911, if that makes sense, because mechanically it works almost identically. So the safety works very well. If you're familiar with the 1911 safety, you're gonna be able to just take this one and run. Slide lock, slide release, whatever you wanna call it, also works perfectly. It's a perfectly contoured little shelf here, very easy to manipulate. And you're kinda of glad that it has such an excellent slide release because there's not really a lot of space to grip the slide, and for that matter, there's not really a lot of slide serrations. All you have is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little slide serrations just to the rear here. The rest of the gun is slick and there's not a whole lot to grab on because of the inverted rail system that the P210 uses in order to get that kind of accuracy that you're looking for. Magazine release, if I picked it up and started mashing it and I was blindfolded, I would be like, oh, this is a mag release from a SIG P226 or 229. It's functionally the same thing. It looks the same. It might even be the same. You've got some attractive but functional checkering here on the front strap of the grip. And you also have matching checkering on the front of the trigger guard. And if you're one of those people who likes to grip, on the trigger guard, this is gonna be right up your alley. Plus, it just looks good. The standard model comes with some really nice, they think these are walnut grips with a nice diamond etching on them. Not nearly as nice as the target grips, but this is something where you're gonna feel like when you pick it up, this is an heirloom piece or something you could pass along to your kids. It's greatest asset, I'm saving for the end here. The trigger is like breaking a glass rod. One of the best triggers I've ever felt on any gun, much less any production gun. I have felt better triggers out there, perhaps, but for just an out-of-the-box production pistol that you can go to the store and buy today, I'm not sure that there's any trigger better than the P210. You can see here, maybe if you zoom in, there's just that little bit of take up right there. And then when you get here, almost no pressure and boom. One slight downside is the trigger reset is a little long. But I'm sure there's probably some kind of good reason for that that I'm overlooking because again, I'm not as sophisticated with the single action pistols, much less the SIG P210 series. Let's take our reading. My guess is gonna be two and a half pounds. I was almost exactly a pound off. It's showing at three pounds, 7.5 ounces. Still a very light, very crisp trigger. And that's really the secret to this gun. That's part of the reason it's so shootable. Not to mention all the things we talked about earlier that make it such an accurate gun, but this trigger really gives it an edge. So would I purchase the SIG P210 standard or target for myself. I think many of you who watch the program regularly already know what I'm going to say. 
I'm a utilitarian whenever it comes to guns. This is an all steel gun. It's kind of heavy. It would be, I think, a little bit hypocritical of me to say, oh yeah, I would purchase this gun and I would carry it and I would use it when I won't say the same thing about many 1911s because I have the same complaints. This is a gun that's limited capacity, very heavy. I like guns that are more practical. This is not necessarily a practical pistol. Now there's something to be said for practicality with accuracy. I mentioned earlier in the video, and I've already done a video about it, just like a brief overview video, because SIG had a P210 carry version at SHOT Show 2020. I checked it out, I shot it, I absolutely loved it. That one uses an aluminum frame, it's got night sights, you've got more slide serrations. It's still kind of going through its final phases of development, but that's a gun that could arguably be practical because it's going to be lighter weight, it's gonna be a little bit shorter, a little bit smaller, you're still gonna have that excellent trigger, you're gonna have night sights and G10 grips. Maybe a little bit Gucci for a carry gun, it might be like a tuxedo carry gun, but I think that one is one that I would consider buying. I'm not a target shooter. I am purely a practical shooter. So for me, the 210 target or the 210 standard, they're not something I would buy, but that doesn't mean, like many of the guns that I review on TFB TV, that doesn't mean that I don't think that you should buy it. If you just like a good range gun, if you want a quality pistol, if you want an heirloom gun, something you can pass on to your kids, if you like the SIG P210, but you missed all the Swiss ones, if you just think this gun is freaking cool, I say buy it. I think for what you're getting, it is actually a pretty good deal. You've got the trigger, you've got the accuracy, you have the all steel construction with a beaver tail that's just gonna sap up recoil. Did I mention the trigger? The controls are great, the fit and finish is excellent, the grips are cool, especially on the target edition. <gasps> So if that's what you're into, I, once again, I mean, I think you're getting a pretty good deal. I've shot 1911s that have been much more expensive than this and they haven't had as nice triggers or been as reliable as the SIG P210. If you wanna pick one of these bad boys up, I suggest that you check out Top Gun Supply. They're the online shooting sports superstore. And if you need to feed it, check out Ventura Munitions one of our valued sponsors, as well as Blue Alpha Gear and Federal Ammo. But guys, we couldn't do this program. This is all unbiased, unpaid reviews. As many of you know, we don't shill. That's because of our Patreon and Subscribestar supporters. We give away four guns a month to Patreon and Subscribestar supporters, automatically entered at the five and the $10 level. So if you go on there, you sign up at the five or the $10 level, not only do we give you cool swag like limited edition patches, but you can win a gun. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next week.